This is one of those really, really important things you need to know how to do. And if you can't factor, it's just not even possible. So one of the things you're always going to hear when you're doing algebra is the importance of factoring. And that's just because if you can't factor, you pretty much can't do anything. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to remember how to do this first with numbers. Remembering that rational means fraction. So the idea is, if I had something like 5 sevenths plus 3 fourteenths, um, well, let's make it 5 sevenths plus 3 sevenths. We know that we can add these because the number on the same is the bottom. Because <laughs> again, the number on the bottom is the same. I think I do that every time. The number on the bottom is the same. Add 5 plus 3 and we get 8. All well and good. But if we had something a little different, like what I had originally written, then we'd realize, well, the first thing we have to do is we have to make them both have the same number on the bottom. In this case, I'm going to go with the LCD, so it's really important to be able to calculate the LCD. If you don't understand what I'm doing, go look up some videos on that. Um, and I'm going to keep the LCD of 14, the lowest common denominator. So that's going to stay the same. But over here, I'm going to make that 14. So to get from 7 to 14, I have to multiply by 2. So this here is going to become 10, giving us 10 plus 3 is 13 over 14. Okay. So hopefully doing this with algebra or with um, real numbers is not flummoxing you because if this is flummoxing you, then it's not going to get any better from here. So go make sure you review how to do this and get really, really comfortable with that so that you can go ahead and do this for algebra. Okay. And it doesn't matter if, say, I have, let's try, let me just do this. Let's say I have x over 7 plus, say, let's do 5x over 7 plus 3x over 14. What does this really change? It actually doesn't change much because I still need a common denominator, which is going to be 14 for each of the, each of the fractions. The 3x stays the same. And again, to get from 7 to 14, I just multiply times 2. So that'll give me 10x or 13x over 14. Um, anything that I do to make this more interesting is really not going to get a whole lot more interesting. Especially if I'm just leaving the numbers on the bottom as pure numbers. Again, I just care about having the 14 on the bottom. This guy stays the same. If this is going to be 14, of course, I need to remember that I multiply the top and the bottom by 2. About the only thing weird here is I have to make sure I multiply the entire top by 2, so I do have to go ahead and use parentheses, distribute the 2, and get myself 10x plus 2. So 10x plus 3x is 13x plus 2 over 14. Okay, so you kind of see where we're going with this? Now, if I did something a little bit more fun, what if I put the x on the bottom? And again, I'm just working the exact same problem over and over and over again, just so you can kind of see maybe um, a relationship among these, among these and how they're really all the same problem with the same kind of strategy. In this case now, instead of having a common denominator of 14, now I'm looking for a common denominator of 14x. And again, to get from here to there, I just multiply the top and the bottom by 2. So 5 times 2 is 10, could be 13 for 14x. So see if you could do this one. See if I do 5 sevenths plus 3 over 14x. You go, ah! Okay. So pause the video, see if you can figure out how to make both of these have a denominator on there. All you have to do is figure out what goes here. So you can get it. So to get from 7 to 14x, I multiply the top and the bottom by 2x, giving me 10x. 10x plus 3. Oops. That's good. 10x plus 3 over 14x. I ain't even go super, super crazy. And I know I'm kind of belaboring the point, but I'm also happy with that. So like, if I had something like this, now I have to do something to both of the equation, or both of the parts, both of the fractions. Um, the do common denominator is actually still 14x because that's the LCD. Um, 
So you can think about that again. This is, if you're not comfortable with this, you need to go look that up because that's going to make the rest of this basically impossible. Recognizing that here I would multiply the top and the bottom by 2. And then here I'd multiply the top and the bottom by x. Like that. Okay? To get me 3x plus 10 over 14. All right, so you kind of see where we're going with all this. Um, basically, we're just going to work a ton of problems and, um, and go through this. I'll work a couple here, and then I'll make a whole video with nothing but examples. I'll work a couple more tricky ones, or I'm not going to them specifically tricky, but some other ones just to kind of get you a little bit more practice before I'm more of set you loose. So say I had something more along the lines of um, 15x over x squared. 15x over x squared minus 4, say minus 2 over x plus 2. Now this is going to be maybe a little less obvious what these answers are or which way to go. So the first step you're always going to do when you're solving these is factor them. And also I put in a negative sign here for good measure. This is going to be x plus 2, x minus 2, because it's a difference of squares. Now this guy on the right is just x plus 2. So hopefully you've gotten good at identifying an LCD by now. And in this case, you would recognize that the common denominator between here and here is going to be x plus 2 times x minus 2. So I'm going to go ahead and fill that in. Now, to get from... To get from here to here, I'm already there, so I can just put him in directly. All right. Now on the next one, here's an x plus 2, here's an x plus 2. The x minus 2 is missing, so I need to add it in. x minus 2. And make sure that I put it in parentheses. Okay. Now I have 2 times x minus 2, and so I have to distribute that 2 across. So we've got 2x minus 4. And now I'm good to go. Now that they both have the same denominator, I can go ahead and combine them. But as I do this, it's really important to notice that I've got a negative sign here. And I have to treat that negative sign with all the respect it deserves, meaning I'm going to say 15 x minus 2x minus 4. Okay. And the only reason I went ahead and um, distributed it here is I knew I was going to have to combine it eventually. You don't have to distribute it in that step. It's just something you're going to have to do anyway. So take as many steps as you need to get this done. So I have 15x. I'm going to take the negative sign and distribute it across. Minus 2x plus 4 times x plus 2 times x minus 2. 15 minus 2 is 13x plus 4. And then x plus 2, x minus 2. Anytime you have a problem like this, you always want to look and make sure you can't reduce it. This is um, already simplified as well as it's going to go. I can't, um, I can't simplify this algebraically any more than it's already done. So that's about as bad as it gets is solving problems like that. Um, not to put too fine a point on it, I guess we could do one more. Let's, see. Let's try something a little bit more interesting. Say we have x minus 21 all over x squared minus x minus 6, say plus 2 over x plus 2. So just to kind of test yourself, see if you can go work that on your own. Pause the video, go see if you can figure it out, and then once you think you've got it or when you get stuck, come back and watch the video. This is how you'll know if you're actually learning the material. So the first step is to actually take this and factor it out. Over here on the left, we've got x, I guess it makes it a little bit bigger. We've got an x minus and an x plus will be 3 and 2, so 
three and two, I think. Outer, inner. Yep, that's good. Okay. So here on the top is x minus 21. And then we have x plus 2, 2. So we want to find the lowest common denominator. It doesn't technically have to be the lowest. It just helps. Um, now looking at this and this, we can see that the only thing that this guy is missing is the x plus 3. So that can be our common denominator. is x plus 2, x minus 3. x plus 2, x minus 3. Now we just need to rewrite it. Uh, the first one's already there, so I can go ahead and just put it in directly. The second one has an x plus 2, but it's missing the x minus 3. So I need to put in an x minus 3 on the top and on the bottom. I say x minus 3 and 2. So something like that. Now to save a little bit of time, I'm going to go ahead and distribute the 2 to get 2x minus 6. Okay. Now I can add these together. I get x plus 2 times x minus 3 on the bottom. On the top I've got x plus 2x plus 3x minus 21 minus 6 is minus 27. Now Again, we always have to make sure that we can't simplify what we have any more than we already have. Um, in this case, I see that I can pull out a 3. If I pull out a 3, I get an x minus, um, pull 3 out of 27, and I get a, a 9. Yeah? Okay. And then I'll have an x plus 2 and an x minus 3 on the bottom. So still, we don't have anything else to, fact, to, um, to cancel out. But it's really important. Wait, yeah, okay. <laughs> it's really important to go ahead and do that. You know, if this had turned out to be an x minus three for some reason, then um, then we would have canceled it out with the one on the bottom. So we just want to make sure that there's nothing else that we can do to make this prettier.